as accurate as we think it is, it can be easily manipulated, especially by anybody who cares to know how to uh, manipulate it one or the other. And, and perhaps some of you may have heard of, um, uh, there, there was a, quite a big case a few years ago of um, some um, um, counsellors and psychiatrists who were accused of um, um, implanting memory of uh, child abuse in people that weren't abused as children. And they just simply suggested to them over a period of time, you know, you, you know that you were, and how did you feel? And they, they, they didn't even say you were. They were just saying, how did you feel when you were abused? And these people are thinking, was I? Well, I, I must be. You know, th these people are, are professionals. Then I might, and and th these memories were actually created, and they believed that they were. So it's quite a, it's quite a scary thing when you think about it. Okay, I have a little test for you, okay? Or, OAR, observe, associate, remember. That's how all this is going to work. We're going to observe something, we're going to associate it, and we're going to remember it. Okay, it's a test. Now, here's the test on yourselves. I'm not testing you, you're testing yourselves. I'm going to show you the difference between looking and observing. Okay, now look at me on the webcam. Look at the look at the slide. Look at the chat box. Look at anything but your wrist. Okay, where your watch is. You've had your watch for some time, no doubt. The number six. You know the six o'clock on your watch if it's an analog watch. You know what what is the number six? Is it the little date? Is it a line like the number one or the number two o'clock or four or five, or or is it a number? <laughs> Do we know what it is? Do, are you really sure what it is? When someone first asked me on my watch that I had like 10 years, I had no idea. And how many times a day do you look at your watch? You look at it, but do you really know it? So have a think about what it is, and then, and then have a look at your watch and see if you were right. Robert wasn't wearing a watch, so he... <laughs> so you win, actually, Robert, you win. Valerie, fantastic. So it is becoming into a French show. So, so that just shows you the difference between between looking at something and observing it. There's a, there's, a, there's a big difference. You know, we all look, we don't register, we don't... And, you know, some people say artists, the real great artists, um, they, they observe, they don't just look. You know, they will look at... They will observe um, the shading, the shadows, the colour. You know, that's, that's, you know, that's... That sometimes sets the, the difference between a real, a real artist um, and uh, and someone who can just draw, someone who just says they can't draw. You know, half the reason people can't draw, like me, is because you you know w what is it that you're drawing, or what point what you know. So I'm like one of those people. So what Michael's written here, same with learning to draw. We watch people every day, but we can't draw them well without practice. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so or okay, observe, associate, remember. Now, Koichi uh, and somebody else actually, interestingly, asked me about how to remember names. Now, this is easy. It really is. Um, as with anything in learning, it's about repetition. A little bit about repetition and a little bit about what I've just said, observing. When someone tells you what their name is, you need to make a point of it in, to, for yourself. Don't just say, oh, hi, you know, hi, great, nice to meet you. You're never going to uh, remember anything like that. Um, so, you know, a classic thing is repeat it back to them, you know, it's, it's nice, you know, hi, my name is Marco, hi Marco, how are you? And then, if it's a, a name you're not familiar with, ask people, ask them what their pronunciation is. Um, because, A, it's nice, it's polite to do that, uh, and B, again, not only have you repeated it, you're then asking again to yourself. What um, You're making a point of it. Um, on the cell phone it works. Fantastic. Um, so check pronunciation. Now, if you can associate it with somebody that you know, you know, perhaps you're meeting Peter, and you know Peter's your brother-in-law. You know, uh, can, can you so can you make an association between this person you just met, this Peter, and the, the Peter, your brother-in-law? Is, is there another Peter? Is there a famous Peter? Um, is there Peter Ustinov, as, as Patrick says? Um, if I were to meet uh, somebody called Patrick, I would try and associate them with with the Patrick that I know, and here he is. Um, so, again, there, there are lots of different things, but they all boil down to the same thing. It's repetition 
and it's a variation of the repetition. So it's, it's not just Peter, Peter, Peter. It's, you know, Peter Pan. There you go. Patrick just said uh, uh, Peter Pan. Would explain why it's more difficult to learn the names of foreign people. Yes, it can be. It can be. There is a um, PETA, People of Ethical Treatment. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And she's got a great thing there. Uh, Peter, Peter loves animals. Uh, and Michael, you said about names of foreign people. You know, there is a, a technique of, about um, learning uh, verbs and words, single verbs of um, foreign languages, foreign words, and almost um, breaking those words down um, and trying to make some, some other associations with them. A little bit more complicated and another subject altogether, really. But yes, you're, you're exactly right in what you said. So, so repeat the name back, check the pronunciation, associate it with someone. You know, when you say goodbye to them, Use their name again. Just use their name, um, and that's that's that will certainly help you remember. Archie can remember it's disgusting in Italian, which is fantastic, and and he he relates that to a class he had with, obviously a great teacher. I can't remember who uh, who that was. Okay, so here are the techniques. Okay, and we've almost come to the end of the slides, but we're going to spend a bit of time here. And this is really where, where this, uh, this uh, hour is all about. So, here are the goal of the techniques. Okay, the goal of the technique is to associate what it is you want to remember with what you know. Okay, this is very important, with what you know. Um, and number two, make it weird, strange, and freaky. Okay, now... Number one, associated with what you know, that goes back with what I was saying at the beginning about the difference between remembering and knowing. It has to be something you know. Number two, make it weird, strange, and freaky. That relates to flashbulb memory. The more freaky you can make it, of course, you're not going to get the, the impact that you did when you heard about 9-11. It's not about that. But you don't want to make it normal. Okay? Now, here are, the, here, are some th here are three, there are lots of systems. I'm going to give you three main systems. Okay? The Romans and Greeks, who were fantastic and mnemonic experts, they were, they were almost the creators, they used the room system. Now, this, this goes by, by, by this theory. You know in your house, you know, if you pick a room, your favorite room, the room that you spend the most time in, you know what's in that room. You know where the furniture is, you know that. You know what's on the furniture. There you go. Patrick is going to think about his bedroom. You know what's on the furniture. You know what color the, the walls are. You know where the television is. You know if you've got any speakers there. You know if you've got a desk in there and what's on the desk. All the little things on the desk. You know that. That's very important. Okay? Now, if you have a list of five things, let's say. Let's say you want to remember um, a, a shopping list. I'm going to do a shopping list in a minute. Uh, and the first thing you're going to want to buy is uh, a piece of uh, bread. Uh, bread and soup, because of uh, Patrick, obviously. Um, we're going to want to buy uh, bread, soup, and zucchini. Thank you, Katia. Now, what you're going to do with the, the, the Roman, the, the room system, is to associate your, your uh, items that you want to remember with what's in the room. Okay, so you always start from a certain size. So you're going to think, I'm going to use this room system, and I'm always going to start with the table in front of me. Or I'm always going to go from left to right, or from right to left. It doesn't matter. The point is, it's what's, what's, whatever you want to do. I'm, you know, it's no good me telling you. It's whatever you want to do. So I'm going to choose my living room, and I'm going to start from the left wall onwards. On the left wall, let's just say I've got my table where I eat. That's all I've got on it. It's a table. The first thing I want to remember to buy is, a, is bread. I said bread, okay? So, we have to associate what we know, is the table, with what we want to remember, which is a piece of bread. We want to make it str weird, strange, and as a DJ likes, freaky. Now, so, it's no good remembering a piece of bread on the table. There's nothing freaky about that. That's not going to make you think, as soon as you remember, the idea is, you're going to think of table, and that will trigger... Yeah, like categories, it's going to trigger the piece of bread. If you just imagine a piece of bread sitting on the table, there's nothing that's going to make, you're not going to suddenly think, table, oh my God, bread, obviously, what else could I have been thinking? So it needs to be something as freaky 
and as strange as you can make it. Now, when you make and when you visualize this, you need to try and use all of your senses.